Well, good evening and welcome to Charlton Live, sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. My name is Louis Mendes. Hope you guys are well on your Thursday evening. This is the big match preview as we gear up for Saturday's trip uh, up to Fleetwood Town. The Addicts looking to extend uh, their unbeaten uh, run and see if they can't even extend their little winning run as well. Two in a row. Uh, joining me to look ahead to that game. First up, top right, Sue Gallup. How are you doing, Sue? All good, thanks, Louis. Weird yeah. not having a game to talk about from Tuesday or Wednesday, but yeah, I'm sure we cope. I'm sure we will cope. Uh, normally, uh, at many points during the season, I would have been happy if we hadn't been playing football. But actually, at the moment, I'm quite, quite enjoying it. So it'd be nice if we if we did have another game. But we've got one on Saturday. Also uh, joining us to look ahead to that one uh, down the bottom of the screen there is Tom Wallin. How are you doing, Tom? Yeah, I'm good. I was just thinking the exact same. It's nice not to have a Tuesday defeat to talk about. But uh, yeah, things are positive at the moment, aren't they? Just about safe, which is good. Yeah, we will, we, will, we will discuss that later on in the show, actually, because you'll, you'll be delighted to hear that I've been playing around on Excel and, work, and, and tried to work out if we are safe or not. Uh, that's something that we'll be looking forward to later on. Of course, we're going to talk, um, as I mentioned on Saturday, about the impending uh, arrival of Kazenga Luar-Luar that was confirmed by Nathan Jones uh, today. We'll hear what Nathan said on that in, in a few moments' time. We'll have a look at my, my little table, work out... Uh, where how many more points we need if if we need any um, and uh, what I thought would be a fun discussion actually is to look at the bottom end of the championship and the top end of League Two and just decide who we'd like to join us uh, in League One next season as well. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, if we get a chance, we might hear from from Alfie May on Dan Carnu, but I'll, I'll just see how we are pressed for time later on. But he said some nice things about Dan on Saturday that I haven't used yet. Um, in the second half of the show, uh, obviously we'll look ahead to the game with Fleetwood. Uh, I'll put it out there saying who should we have uh, to discuss uh, the Cod Army, and about a million people all replied Nappers straight away. Um, so I, I have spoken to Nappers. We spoke to him uh, last night, so he'll give us the lowdown on uh, Charlie Adams' side as they try and battle to stay in uh, League One. Then, of course, we'll look ahead to the match from our point of view. We'll hear once more uh, from the Addicts boss, Nathan Jones. Right, first things first. As, as I mentioned there the other day, um, on Saturday, uh, I revealed on, on Twitter uh, that the free agent that we were looking at was... Uh, likely to be Kazenga Luar Luar. I knew that Tariq Fossu was coming in as well. As, as it has played out, it, it has been uh, Luar Luar as expected. So we're just waiting for clearance on that, which we'll hear from Nathan Jones uh, right now. You asked, uh, well, sorry, you mentioned post-match um, after Saturday that you hope to have an additional player coming in. Can you give us any updates? Yeah, we've agreed with Kazenga Luar Luar. Um, uh, we're just waiting for international clearance to see whether he'll be involved in the weekend. But it's a player I've worked with over a number of years, player I worked with at Brighton where you know he was magnificent then he came in and did a similar job for me at um, at Luton and he's someone that we haven't got here. We got in wide areas we have like Tyrese Campbell's probably the only natural one um, but we wanted to have that option so like I know Kazenga very well because he's just just left Greece so it, it was an ideal opportunity. In terms of fitness is he up to speed and can play straight away or he needs uh, need some training for He's one of those physical phenomenons that you could chuck him. You could chuck him on the moon for a year, and he'd come back and be able to be potent for for a number, for for for, for a certain amount of minutes. And that's the type of athlete he is. Great lad, fantastic player, has had a real good career. And uh, and and I I always enjoy working with him. So he makes us as a group, as a club, and 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 hopefully he's an eleven better. Oh so yeah, that's Nathan talking about the impending arrival then of uh, Kazenga. Lua, Lua, as uh, as I mentioned on, on Saturday, Sue. So he's got to go through international clearance, which um, I also found out on Saturday that um, Connor Wickham had to do that as well because his last club was in Wales because he played for Cardiff. There's a weird little quirk of the rules for you. Uh, we have to get international clearance every time Tom comes on the show, actually, every week. But um, uh, yeah, Lua, Lua, 33 years old, Sue. Uh, been around the block um, a, a few times, but you know he's, he's gone around it in style. So yeah, excited to see... What he's going to bring, presumably for the rest of the season, I haven't actually seen confirmed anywhere how long this deal is going to be, but presumably for the rest of the season, and similar to to Connor, I guess it will be a chance for him to try and try and play his way into a contract for next year. Yeah, and apparently he can play on the moon. Um, <laughs> that was a quite funny comment. Um, yeah, I mean, I when when it when it was sort of said about him, I'm really excited about this signing. Um, I think we're all very familiar with seeing him playing for Brighton and Luton. Um, and again, I think it, it's as we're seeing now, 
the more that the people are kind of buying into Nathan's ideas and the way he plays and the way he sets up, he's not someone that would that would re-sign a player to us if he didn't feel like he was going to add to what we've already got. And obviously he's had him at Brighton and he's had him at Luton. So it's definitely a player that that he puts his faith in and his trust in. So I think as a as a knock-on effect of that, then as fans, we should trust in that. Um, yeah, it will be interesting. I mean, again, I think if we're looking at building a club for getting, promo- uh, getting um, promotion uh, next season, he would definitely be someone um, that, that you could see actually doing a job in a in a team that's that's going to be going for promotion. Um, so I, I guess if we're going to sign him, I I would think it's probably going to be at least a couple of years, um, because I I guess at his age, it's potentially going to be his last pro contract. What is he thirty three? Did you say? So it, again, it's it's potentially going to be his last club. Um, at this type of level, so yeah, I, I, I would, I would quite happily give him a couple of years. Um, knowing and seeing the ability that he's got, um, and and the experience that he's got at playing at, at higher levels and working his way through the through the leagues, obviously. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess Tom. I mean, I'll, I'll be surprised if we go straight in with a long term deal. I, I might be wrong on that, but I, my, my guess is we're going to have a proper look at him over the next the next few months just to see exactly where he is. Um, I mean, like I say, it's one that Nathan knows. And I, I said on Sunday, like, you, you, you got to trust Nathan based on what he's achieved in these very early stages with us so far. He's improved players. He seems to have an eye for getting the best out of players that he knows as well. So, you know, and Robert's saying Luai Luai is, is quality. Do you think we might be going down the more experienced ex, ex-Premier League freebies? I mean, a, do you, do you see that sort of being that the type of player that we want? Sort of players. I mean, he's played briefly in in the Premier League, uh, Luai Luai, when he was with Newcastle at the start of his career, mainly in the in, in the Championship. But uh, experienced ex pros, ones that Nathan's trust. Do you think you can see you can see him doing a lot of that? I think you need a bit of a mix, and I think the advantage of him having worked at clubs that are now near the Premier League, <clears throat> Luton being a good example, Southampton obviously being another one that there's players in those camps that therefore are at that level and know Nathan Jones. So we've got that kind of combination. Whereas under previous managers, they've perhaps managed at this level or below. So if they are looking for players that they trust and players that they know, they're automatically at a level below. Um, I don't like the idea of bringing too many players in that are just ex-Premier League and, and older. I remember when we brought Ricardo Fuller in, for example, you could see in terms of quality, he was a step above everybody else. But came with injuries and problems and, and obviously his age was an issue. So you want a bit of a blend. But I think if, if Nathan's focusing on players that he trusts, then I think that's a good thing because, as you say, given what he's done so far with the players he has got, he's definitely moulding a bit of a squad here. And I think Lua Lua himself just brings something different to us because since Corey's gone, we haven't had that width. We've had to rely on the likes of Tenai and obviously Small coming in more recently, who actually I think Tenai's done a good job in recent weeks but they're obviously playing a lot deeper. And so the midfield has been a little bit more compact with them running around. But I think with Lua Lua in the side or even in the squad, means that if you do want to turn it up and you want some width either side of a striker, then you've got a few more options there. So I'm leaning more towards what you think in that we'll probably give him something to the summer. And if he impresses, then definitely like Sue says, then you give him a contract for next year and you try and get him to kick us onto the championship. Whether he could then do it at that level, I don't know. But again, that's a conversation for another day. So yeah, I'm excited to see him come in and get a little bit of a cameo over the next, what is it, seven, eight games left and and see where we go from the summer. Mm, yeah, Dan says, uh, one word to describe Luar Luar is uh, backflip. Uh, and uh, yeah, Peter pointing out that according to Wikipedia, Luar Luar is Jan Kermigan's brother-in-law. It's an absolute shoo-in to sign in then, isn't he? Um, any, anyone who's related to Jan is fine uh, by me. <laughs> um, Martin says, getting match fit on the moon, that's got to be a first. Yeah, it could well be. Um, yeah, I mean, so um, more more so the question is, I mean, Sam put it up there. It's, it looks like a great play and, and, and looks more like it could be a 4-4-2 on the cast. So what we haven't seen from Nathan yet, which, which is something we were told he does do, but he hasn't had to do it yet, is 
we're, we're told he, do, he doesn't tend to stick to one formation or certainly not in game. He, he, he shift it up a bit, but I don't, I don't remember seeing too much of that at all, but certainly part of that will be the fact that we don't have wingers other than TC. So, so you can see he's trying to bring in more, more variety to the squad than, than what he was left with. I mean, it just, just shows how we, we, we sold our, our winger in, in January and now we're getting another one in. It just shows there's sort of a little bit of lack of uh, joint up thinking when, when we're going through managerial change in a, in, in a transfer window again. Yeah. And I, I think obviously with, with Nathan wanting to have that flexibility to be able to change up formations and, and sort of rethink tactics and how, um, we want to play our game as opposed to matching up against the opposition. I think, like you're saying, like I think a lot of people have been quite critical of our formation well, probably over the last couple of seasons, really, um, and how stuck we've been in that because we haven't got that flexibility um, in the squad. So, um, yeah, it'd be, it'll be really good to to see us being able to switch that up a bit it might make things a little bit more interesting a little bit more exciting um and again going with that really more what like he likes to talk about being more front footed and sort of advancing um the pitch faster um that that 442 allows you to do that more doesn't it so um yeah i, I think it is just that that thinking ahead of having that flexibility and the adaptability within the squad to be able to to try the different formations and just catch other teams out, I guess. Mm. Yeah, I and mean, it still sounds like not, nothing's going to be on the cards for Tariq then. So he has he has been down there, Tom. But um, yeah, it doesn't sound like we're, we're going to be signing him uh, anytime soon, if at all. Uh, it's, it's sad, but I, it, I was just thinking what we should do is get him in Fleetwood away, where he scores a hat trick which he did previously. And then, and then if we don't want to get rid of him after that, just get him in for his one job that, that he does. Yeah, I think, um, am I sad about it? I mean, I'm nostalgic for him because he was here before and obviously he did that hat trick and he had moments of brilliance in him. I think, look, I don't know what level he's at now. Obviously, I haven't seen him play football regularly for a, for a long time. So my thinking would be that if we're not looking at him, that's probably a good sign in the sense that the people we are looking at are a step above that. It's obviously a shame for him because he would have been hoping to come back to somewhere that he was familiar with. But ultimately, and I've said, had to say this a few times this season about various players and managers, our priority is Charlton. And, and ultimately, if Tariq doesn't fit in and he's not quite at the level that Nathan needs him to be, then we have to be ruthless in these decision makings and we have to have to say sorry, but but no thanks and and kick on with other players. So, yeah, I'm kind of, it would have been nice to see him again. You know, he's not somebody I hold ill will towards after his, his last stint with us but ultimately if it's not right it's not right mm, excellent i've just seen paul said uh looking forward to seeing the main man nappers and uh, no offense Lou. no offense taken he was excellent when I, when I spoke to him uh yesterday we'll hear him later on uh in in the show right um uh, as promised I, i've got an excel spreadsheet for you i know you're all really looking forward to it but um just just to sort of take us into that nathan uh, was asked earlier on about uh, by terry if he's been looking at sort of the other results over the last few days and now the fact that the teams with games in hand on us can't catch us even if they were to win all of those games in hand uh, as it stands that he's winning the results elsewhere this week um it means we can't be overhauled by the teams below us that had games in hand prior to that um did that figure in your thoughts since your arrival yeah. or uh as it is you know it's because our destiny's in our own hands it like, everything's about us like if we do what we do and we you know we don't want to be reliant on anyone else like it's nice that people are not not winning games below us but we have to start looking at different different things and we, we we've got to take care of our own we can't be relying on people you know i've always been a big believer that um, you, you, you control your own destiny. Everything's God's will, and you control. You know, you, you you control and do what you can for for your own self. Then everything else is is secondary. But look, I I, um, I watched the only game I watched in midweek was was the Fleetwood Bristol Rovers game because that's that was relevant to us. And and, and apart from that, look, I, 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 there's no concern what others do. There we go. So that's what Nathan says. He says it's absolutely of no concern uh, what others do in terms of staying up. So. 
that means the, the obviously the only thing we can worry about is what we need to do so um let me show you this uh, i've uh, ran some numbers as i often do uh, so as you can see on my screen here, I've uh, got the current league table on the left-hand side. That's us sitting in a uh, lofty position of 15th uh, with 44 points. You can see down the bottom there, the bottom four, Cheltenham are top of the bottom four with 34. So we're currently at 10 points above them. But just to try and gain an understanding of what I think we might actually need for the rest of the season, I've just extrapolated their points per game that they've achieved over the course of the season now so if Cheltenham were to continue on the run they've been on and everyone else in the division so Cheltenham will finish uh, top of the relegation zone but they'll finish on, on 43 points so we could potentially already be safe if Cheltenham carry on going at the rate they've already been at Tom um whether that, I mean, that's an indication that I think I think we're nearly there Robert says four more points needed and we'll be safe traditionally you need about 47 48. But I mean, I, I think we're right on, on the precipice now, Tom. Is is that is that a fair assumption? I mean, why do you always come to me with these graphs? Because <laughs> uh, I know you love them. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what the only thing that says to me then, if forty-seven is normal, but forty-four gets you relegated this year, is that vindication that this league's worse, or does that make the league better because teams have at the top of one more? Basically, I just want confirmation that this league has been awful this year and we are an absolute joke for not going up because that that's kind of all I, all we can hope for. But um, yeah, I think I was saying to the people around me, and I think I said it on Sunday's show, I, I'd like one more just to be sure. I think for if it is going to be one point, that keeps us a little bit nerv nervy, doesn't it? And we've definitely got us in, in us to throw it away on the last game of the season. So um one more win between now and is it Wickham on the final day and that'll do me let's do it away at Cambridge uh in front of Lyle Taylor that would be fun that'll yeah. that'll do it and uh, I do yeah I reckon one more will do it I do feel a little bit cocky since the last time I brought up a uh, an Excel spreadsheet on the screen and I said oh Cambridge have got a tough run I'm fairly confident they've lost every single game since then so I do look very clever now see um that I mean that gives us a bit of freedom doesn't it I mean it, it, me other than Tom who's obviously still not a hundred percent there. I think I think that shows we're practically there now, um, and, and therefore it does give us a little bit of freedom to maybe experiment in, in in the last few weeks of the season with where we might find players that we want to play, like in the Luai Luar and Connor Wickham stuff, or, or or maybe even give give youngsters like Patrick Casey a go at, at the very end of the season. I'm not so sure because because. As, as we know, and like listening to Nathan and, and how passionate he is, I think his aim will be let's get as many points as we can on the board because we don't want to be just going, oh, we only need one more win because then you get complacent and then it just all goes, let's just go for every game full on. Yeah, mix it up a bit with players, have a look. It does give you a little bit of freedom to maybe mix up the uh, the starting lineups or or whatever, but at the same time, I think Nathan will be looking at it like, right, let's just go for it. Yeah, like well, I don't even know if you've done a graph of how high we could finish potentially. Because um, nah, that would be quite depressing. Okay, so <laughs> oh, could we probably just be outside the playoffs? Um, no, no, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, not that good then. Um, but yeah, I think it's. Just, just knowing his personality, he's not going to be like, I saw it, we only need another win or another four points and we're fine. He'll be drumming it into those players because actually what I want to see for you as, from you as players is why you should still be here next season because he's already said the squad is going to be cut quite a lot in the summer. I would assume there'll be quite a, quite a few incomings. So, if you're here and you want to stay here, you've got to show me what you've got for the rest of the season, regardless of what position we're in in the table. He will demand that. So I, I know Tom's probably not as confident, but I, I feel like we've probably got a good few wins in us and to, like for the rest of the season, maybe more. Mm, yeah, I mean, um, Bernie says uh, we should play... Uh, the best team uh, every week. And Martin says uh, Nathan Jones won't let them uh, back off. Alan reckons we're going to finish around the middle of the table, which should be fair, like a month ago, I would have bitten your hand off for. So, yeah, it, it could have been a lot worse. And, and like, it is about laying groundwork for next season. So, I mean, let's get carried away. And I mean, if we do get relegated now, this next segment is going to come back to uh, look a bit ridiculous. But I thought, I was thinking maybe maybe have a quick look at the, at the table 
in the championship and in league two just to see who could be joining us in the league one next season um so focusing on on the championship i mean it's a really tight relegation battle down there other than for rotherham who are absolutely doomed so we'll be making the trip to to the new york stadium next season as you can see down the bottom of the championship there sheffield wednesday and huddersfield are inside the relegation zone on 38 birmingham and qpr are just outside it on 39 uh, then you've got plymouth blackburn and stoke on 41 and you can probably just about go up to swansea and millwall on, on 43 uh, although obviously for, for those two clubs and, and like Watford and 45, a lot would have to go wrong for them for them to drop down with the amount of teams between them and and where we are now. So it, it comes down to, I guess, Tom, you, you, you think about you want clubs in League One next season that would on paper give us the best chance of getting promoted. So whereas last season we were looking, everyone was looking at that Ipswich and that Sheffield Wednesday who, who were walking away with the division, um, you know, and especially Ipswich and, and to an extent Wednesday felt like they had a lot of money to spend or definitely Ipswich. I'm not sure really how it worked with Wednesday, having said that, to be fair. But uh, and then obviously a Plymouth side that have been building for a couple of years. Um, whereas this year, people, as you as we've sort of mentioned, there spoke about it being a, a weaker League One. Um, so the week, w- w- the week of the better, really, for League One next season. So out of those clubs, I mean, who, who do you think would be the best ones to come down? Obviously, Rotherham are in there already. I mean, Sheffield Wednesday, obviously their form looks good, but I feel like we always stand a good chance against them. So whilst there might be teams in that that pack that are maybe financially worse off or maybe in a bit more turmoil, I wouldn't mind Wednesday, you know, because we seem to do all right against them most seasons. Um, obviously, it'd be great if Millwall came down, but that would be a guaranteed no points. So that would be a bit of a risk. Um, but apart from that, I, I don't know, maybe, maybe a Stoke or QPR. I feel like they're they're not brilliant. Um, we were saying the other day, weren't we, about Nathan Jones and the fact that nobody really has done a good job at Stoke at all in a while. So Stoke would be interesting. Uh, selfishly, I'd quite like Blackburn just because my mate supports them. So not against him, but just so we'd have a game to go to together. But uh, yeah, I think if it was Sheffield Wednesday, Stoke and Rotherham, I'd be I'd be happy enough with that. I think. Yeah. So do you have a preference looking at looking at the bottom end of the championship, or which? which um... Which would make for the, the the most competitive league one in our favour. Yeah, I think what Tom says about Wednesday is um, is true. Like, obviously they went up, didn't they? So that is effectively coming straight back down again. Um, I don't know. I quite fancy. Uh, it's a weird one. I quite fancy seeing our QPR would would cope in League One um, because I mean they've got. They've got quite a harsh crowd. I think they're still living in their sort of their sort of Premier League mindset of we're a big club. Um, I think it would be really interesting to see how they would manage being playing because league like whatever people say, League One is rough. Like it's hard, um, and I I wonder whether um, they would not necessarily cope with with that that intensity and that pressure that league one has like obviously the championship is a lot prettier in terms of footballing and the skill and stuff um so i i would yeah i quite fancy qpr and wednesday Mm. yeah i mean michael says rotherham huddersfield and maybe plymouth uh, yeah, but, I mean, yeah, might might not be a bad shout. Sam says, if if Wednesday come down, do they take Backinson back? Do we want him uh, to stay? I mean, it's still mm, still quite early in in Tyreek's spell with us to to maybe make a definitive decision. I would, I, I think, I, I think a couple of weeks ago, everyone probably would have said no. He's got a goal now. Maybe that give him a bit more confidence. Who knows? But we'll see. Uh, Paul Davenport says maybe we can get another iconic result at Loftus Road. I mean, that's another reason why QPR coming down will be a bad thing. I've literally never seen us win there. Uh, I've never seen QPR lose at Loftus Road. I've done a couple of other games for them as well, like excluding us, and they've never they've never got beat. Uh, all hell let loose says they've obviously got no uh, spare money. Hey to Sid, by the way, he was on Charlton TV on uh, Saturday. Done really well on that, Sid. I watched that back. Well done uh, for that. So also the, the top end of League Two then, Tom. So this is uh, this is an interesting one into the equation. So if you're looking at um, top of the table, Mansfield on 69 points. Uh, Wrexham on 67, Stockport are on 66, they've got two games in hand, uh, so that's the current top three. Then playoffs, you're looking at Crew, MK, Barrow, Wimbledon, and then there's quite a lot of clubs just outside. 
So you could probably go down to like Newport, Morecambe, Jills, Crawley and Walsall to, to potentially get into the playoffs. Now, obviously, this is a, a slightly different one, Tom, because you'd expect the majority of these clubs coming up from League Two to not be able to compete financially with us other than Moneybags, Wrexham, of course. So, I mean, any preference out of those ones? Is it just a case of like the the most tin pot clubs possible to, to come up on the assumption they won't they won't be a threat like Barrow? Well, the good news is the most tin pot's probably Gillingham. So then you've got a tin pot team and you get to see Johnny Williams back at the Valley. So it's win-win for me. Um, although you'd have to go back to, to there as well, which would be a shame. I think, uh, yeah, probably. I'd love to see Wrexham drop out of that top three. That would be hilarious. And uh, I, I don't know if Sue would say the same or not really with regards to Wimbledon. But for me, seeing Jacko back here managing somebody else would not be very nice. I don't know how I'd feel about that. So... Whilst on the one hand, obviously seeing him get promoted with Wimbledon would be would be great, and I'd love that. I also don't know how I feel about seeing him in the Valley in, in the other dugout, so that's a tough one. But uh, I don't want Milton Keynes to come up either for for obvious reasons. So yeah, if it was Barrow out of that playoffs as it stands now in the top three, so be it. But if Wrexham dropped out and maybe Barrow snuck in in the top three, then it would be quite. I'd just personally quite like to see Gillingham back just to just to see Johnny Williams. So mm. selfishly, it would be that. Yeah, Barrow would be a good... So out of those grounds, I've not been to Wrexham and I've not been to Barrow for a match. I've been... To, obviously, obviously, I went to Barrow's ground on my honeymoon to buy a mug. Um, that's the sort of thing I get up to. Um, people don't believe that story when I tell them, I went to Barrow on my honeymoon because uh, it's only just around the corner from the Lake District. But Sue, uh, Sue I mean, look, looking at those... I mean, uh, the thing is, if Wrexham come up, uh, at some point, obviously, this ride's got to end, but they do have the, the potential of, of, of those... Um, big deep pockets behind them don't they yeah and I, I went up there this season um to actually watch Wimbledon um and uh, I mean they've got such a good team like they really have like for a league two team obviously got Parkey as manager and I, I've, I've always been I mean I don't agree with like again they're sort of like the Man City of league two aren't they just lob money at it but at the same time, I think they've got some really good people at the club, including Parkey. Um, obviously, a few of their old their players used to play for us, so I wouldn't be against Wrexham coming up. Um, it's a fun day out. It's a, it's a nice little ground, um, and yeah, I guess sentimentally, I would love to see Jacko get promoted. Um, Yes, it would be weird to see him in the opposition dugout, but also, I guess, again, on the emotional level, he never got to say goodbye to anybody when he left. And maybe that, that just gives him that opportunity for the fans to kind of say thank you. So yeah. I'd this go is with that. sounds harsh, but yeah, Wimbledon could never compete financially with us. So if they were no, to come up, no. that, wouldn't be, that wouldn't be a bad shout for us because it would give us a much better chance. Yeah. Uh, of promotion uh, promotion as well. Um, Michael says, spot on, Louis. Uh, although that is us losing to Barrow next season. Now, well, I do deserve that, what I've said. Uh, Martin says, please, no Gillingham or AFC Wimbledon. All hell let loose, says uh, Wrexham to drop out of the top three and get beaten in the playoff final by Crew Alexandra. There we go. Right, we're going to have a quick break. Uh, when we come back, we'll turn our attention uh, to Saturday's trip up to Fleetwood Town. Thinking about a new kitchen or bathroom? Find professional, independent local installers with free home surveys, itemised quotes and protected payments, trading standards approved contracts and workmanship warranties. The British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom, Bathroom Installations accredits installers to ensure they are police checked, fully insured and experienced. Take the risk out of home improvement. Visit bikbbi.org.uk Hello fellow addicts, I'm so excited to tell you all about our micropub, The River Owl House. The River Owl House is based in East Greenwich, it has six pub of the year awards, an ever-changing selection of amazing beer. It's owned by Chomp fans, walkable to the ground in just 20 minutes with buses that go direct to the Valley too. If your matchday routine includes a drink with your friends, you must join your fellow addicts in the river. See you soon. Right, welcome back to Charlton Live. This is the big match preview. We're making the trip up to Fleetwood Town. Uh, on on Saturday, actually, just just based on what we were just discussing before the break, there, Callum says uh, if Crew come up, you know that Kirk uh, will score against us. It's, uh, I don't know where 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 it, I saw it today, maybe on the forum or something. But so, someone linked uh, 
a story about when we signed Charlie Kirk and there were quotes from Sangard saying how great he's going to be. And, and also saying, oh, you know, we had Liam Miller last season. I think he's an even bigger talent than Liam Miller. So it uh, shows what Sangard knew, didn't it? Because I think Miller en- ended up playing Champions League and is now like, doing quite well in the championship. And Charlie Kirk is uh, back with Queer Alexandra, it, it would appear. Um, right, yeah, Fleetwood on Saturday. Um, this has got to be the most requested um, guest fan from an opposition we've ever had. Um, it's a well-known uh, vlogger. Uh, and, and blogger, uh, he's, he's a guy called Nappers, who's a big Fleetwood Town fan. He does uh, COD's vlogs. He's got that League One pod as well uh, that he does. Plenty of you know about him. So I sat down for a chat with him yesterday uh, to find out uh, a little bit about Charlie Adams' side. Right, well, we're joined now by Ben uh, from COD's uh, vlogs, or you may know him better as Nappers, ahead of uh, Saturday's uh, away trip uh, up to Fleetwood Town. Ben, thanks for, for, for joining us, um, sitting inside the... The relegation zone, six points adrift. Do, do you think you guys can still get out of it? It's a tough question. You know, it, as games go on, you kind of thinking, well, we could be relegated in you know three or four weeks' time, or you know, you, you put a, you know a few results together. You know, we're five unbeaten, and I'm kind of thinking, well, in, maybe we should have won four and drawn the other, and you know that's eight points. And every game, I'm coming away from frustrated, thinking. You know, it's two points dropped. We've still gained a point. We're still, you know, still in the hunt. But you're kind of thinking the points that we've dropped, we could, you know, I know it's obviously easier said than done. And, you know, at times we've been fortunate to get a point. Um, you know, at times last night, and especially against Port Vale, um, it's frustrating. But we've got eight games to go. There are tough eight games. You've got to go to Orient. You've got to go to Blackpool. You've got to go to Ox. You've got to go away to Peterborough. You've got to play yourself at the weekend, which is going to be a really, really difficult game. You've got to play Northampton, who are, who are, who are you know, doing well for themselves. Cheltenham who are down there and Burton who are down there if we're still in with a fight uh, that late on so um, you know busy 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 period but you know wins you know needed now we've turned we've turned draws in from losses into draws but it's turning those draws into into victories yeah that's what I was going to say I mean you're undefeated in in five but four of those yeah. are draws I mean do you feel like you're you're close to to, to getting to, to getting the results that you need are you, are you you're in all these games at least <laughs> Absolutely. And, you know, you look at yourselves as well, that you kind of obviously want an awful runner, you know, of fixtures and you drew a few, you know, when, when Nathan first came into the into the football club, into the building and you turned them into wins recently as well. And you've just seen that what, you know, winning two or three games in you know a four game period, two week period can do is pretty much, you know, from January onwards has changed your season and you know, a two week period can change your season. I always say, you know, Saturday to Saturday where you play, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, if you win three or go get seven points, you know, you're in for it. And if we get three on Saturday, that's five. And it's, I would have taken that from those three games. Probably not in the order of that we're going to get them if we do win. But um, no, we, we are still in with a chance. I, I, I do believe that we are improving. The players weren't fighting under the last two managers. I'm now seeing fight. I'm now seeing great togetherness. And he's ultimately just been a bit too late. I kind of think, well, we had a... A kind of an eight game period where I think we lost seven of the eight or the nine games and uh, we're getting hammered as well. But you know, although Charlie Adams got a point per game ratio like Lee Johnson has, the performance has been much better. We've been in every single game and we should be at least nine points better off if it wasn't for you know, uh, either mistakes, um, or maybe just a bit of extra quality in, in that final third. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned uh, similar to us, you're on a free manager season, which is never a good sign. No. I mean, Char- Char- Charlie seems to have put some fight into them. I mean, like us, do you sort of regret the one that's come in the middle? I think Michael Appleton's tenure has just completely derailed our season. Uh, was that the same with Lee Johnson for you? Was he not the right replacement for Scott Brown? Well, you look at it, you know, you said Dean Holden a week before, you know, Scott Brown. Scott Brown actually got sacked after the reserve fixture, you know, at the Valley. And you, know, you look at the first six games, and I wasn't a massive fan of Scott Brown. First six games of the season, we went away at Bolton, went away at Derby, went away at Charlton. Let's be honest about that. We were going to, you know, you look at that at the start of the season, you're thinking, well, there's three. There's certainly three of my top six at the start of the season. You know, we had, you know, home games against Cambridge and... Um, Shrewsbury in there as well and we were away at Carlisle the opening day of the season which you think first game in the league one for I think 10 years it's, it's a difficult start that and I always thought if we can get a point per game unfortunately I only got a point Johnson comes in it takes him a while to get up and running and then we get up and running uh, you know in other competitions kind of you know, beat Kidderminster beat Leicester's you know under 21s and managed to get a couple of you know good points away at uh, you know Barnsley Blackpool at home as well we were just conceding too many goals and it kind of felt, well, 
he kept talking about bringing players in and he didn't really praise the players that were in the building. And we had kind of two months with these players and it kind of felt, well, he maybe did that bit of slagging off, sit down conversations of probably six weeks too early. That faltered him. And um, I was shocked when we actually sacked him because I thought, well, it, it was right before the January transfer window. And I honestly believe, and I think Charles will be in the same boat, if you were pointing Nathan Jones, when you're putting Nathan, you know, um, when you're putting Michael Appleton, sorry, you'd be pushing top top 10, top six minimum. And we'd be, I think, around 15th, 16th, where I think this squad, you know, belongs. So, you know, uh, although kind of, you know, performances, you know, have been better, it's still not an improvement in points per game. But when, when you're looking at the football and you're thinking, we have got a chance in games, where well, before we were kind of lucky to get any points at all, really. Hmm. Um, did, did it feel like your season was um, always one that was set up to fail after after what went on with the owner being jailed for fraud in, in the summer? Andy Pilly has obviously been there bankrolling the club for, for a long time um, and now he's gone away for a long time instead. Um, yeah, I think we lost that little bit of um, security, shall I say, that kind of it's weird because everybody expected it. I don't think they expected for the length and what was going to happen. Um, it, I always remember just sitting down, you know, before a live stream one day. And obviously we knew of the consequences for about a year before. But I always thought, you know, nothing really serious will happen, as you, as you often do. And you kind of think, oh, you know, he's not going to be able to run the football club. And then no one knows what's happening. No one knows what, what to kind of run. And they are good guys at Fleetwood, the good number twos and number threes, you know, behind Andy. Andy made a lot of the decisions. And if there's any unrest in the changing room, Andy would quickly sort it out. He'd quickly get the key influence players, your captains, your experienced players, upstairs speak, what, what's going wrong? Is the manager right for you? We lost that. We lost that. And it, it has been massive for us. And um, recruitment wasn't bad. I think that in some areas we could have recruited a left back, could have recruited a nippy forward. Um, we didn't do that. And you know, the team on paper, like to Josh Hill, Josh Vella, Jack Murray, Jaden Stockley, it's a decent team you know, for League One standards to stay in this division. It's not a team that, in my eyes, can go 13 without a victory, that you know can be bottom, can be 13 points adrift at one stage in the season. And um, you know, the, 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 the Andy Pilly situation has made a big halt. Three managers in the season. I, I actually said you know, on my channel about a month before, um, if you are looking at sacking a manager for the third time in a season or a second time in a season, that's instant relegation and we go and do it. And um, no, it's uh, it's been a difficult season and uh, a difficult period for the football club because Andy was, um, you know, the daddy of, of Fleet, which as I say, he looked after everything and we haven't kind of got that guidance now and everyone's a bit all over the place, should I say. Yeah, I mean, obviously he, he, he sort of steamrolled this, this this progression through through, through the leagues. It's famous, you know, Fleetwood's story is famous, but I, I always wonder, like, for a, a Fleetwood, a club the, the size of Fleetwood Town and where they've come from, what are their expectations in League One? You've been up there for a while now, so I guess you've become accustomed to it. But do, do people still talk, take a step back and think, well, actually, we are, you know, quite a small club even for this level? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, our population can get into your stadium. You know, our popular, you know, Derby's ground, you know, and I'm going away at stadium still, Portsmouth, Charlton, you know, Bolton, you know, of this world, just to name a, a few in this division. There's, there's plenty more. And even like your big city clubs, like your Oxford, your Lincolns, who are you know, much bigger than us, bigger towns. You know, our town's 26,000, got the C next to us as well. You know, we are a, probably a National League, National League North size football club, punching well above our weight. Um, in terms of, you know, look, we've got good facilities that we've been able to have thanks to the owner. You know, it's, in my opinion, the top five, top six best in, in this division. It's a, a, you know, a high championship facility, you know, and it, it, it's able to attract players. Um, and then, you know, the budget is a competitive one. I think it's about 14th or 15th, I'd say, in, in this division. Um, and, you know, the, my aim is, and everyone gets sick of me saying this, is 50 points every season. Uh, we'll, we'll, and it'll talk to me when we get to 50 points. And, um, you know, a couple of seasons we, we battled with the playoffs, a couple of seasons that we've been in trouble. Um, but no, Fleetwood Town just being a football club, being in League One, I, I'm very happy with. Um, obviously, it's not been nice this season. All I want is from a team of Fleetwood is to fight, to give everything, to go to the very end, to look hungry, to look like they're in a game. And I never saw that on the Brown at the first six games, never saw that on the Johnson for about 10 games. I saw it for the first five or six under Adam. I think I've seen it in every single game. Um, 
Uh, sorry, uh, I think I saw that in every single game. So um, and that's all I want: a bit of fight, a bit of hunger, and um, we're getting that at the moment. And if we give that, I'm very happy, no matter if we win, lose, or draw. Excellent. And just find them. We've got a few of our former players. So uh, I didn't even realise Kill Kenny was with you. We had him on loan yeah. for about five minutes last season, but we won't, I won't ask too much about him. But um, yeah, how how have um, Stockley and Wiredu been getting on? Because they obviously. Uh, particularly Stockley was, was a big player for us for a while and Brendan came up through the ranks and people thought he had a good future but he never, never really happened for him at the Valley. Brendan's been an absolute monster. Brendan Wiridu is, in my opinion, our best player. Um, he's our captain now and he's thrived off being captain. Our last captain, less said the better, uh, but Brendan has come in. He's a role model for the other players. You know, he connects with the fans. He knows what the club's all about. You know, he's moved into a centre-half role and he's been a revelation there. Um, he's got Charlie, he's got the best out of him. You know, really, really, you know, bright future. And I genuinely believe if he, you know, he signed a new long-term deal, I think he's going to go for over a million pounds. I, I really do. I think he'll go this summer if we go down. Uh, Kilkenny has looked bright since coming in the last three or four games. He's probably been our best player in, in a lot of the games, a lot of the moments. Scored a goal that was deflected, hit the ball last night as well. He's got, you know, a you know, good on both feet, agile, nip. He can play forwards, run forwards, and uh, a good player at this, uh, at this level. And uh, hopefully that he can stay, you know, fit till the end of the season because we're going to need absolutely everyone for, for the last eight games of the season. Jaden, yeah, good player. Um, struggled at the start. Obviously, he only scored one goal up to Boxing Day. Um, and obviously scored on Boxing Day. Charlie's coming. I think he's got eight goals, four assists in, in about 15 games now. Obviously not scored in the last couple, but looks lively. Um, I've noticed he can't... He, he can run and jump, but he can't do the same at the both times. It, he, he's better <laughs> when he's got nippy forwards with him up front that can do his running. So... We go along into stock, he'll hold it up, flick it on for a Cochrane or a Promise or a, or a Phoenix or a Junior, and they'll run on and do kind of getting behind. And then, obviously, in the box, he's you know really good and you know he gets a shot away. You know, he, he often you know tests the goalkeeper. Um, obviously, a couple of tame shots last night, and uh, you know, he gives everything. So, um, you know, I'm a big fan of Stockley. Obviously, I don't think he's up to Charlton standards of trying to get him into the playoffs, but the fleet, if he can score 12 goals, 15 goals a season. I think I'm going to need another three or four, maybe five off him if we're going to stay up this uh, this season. But since Charlie's come in, Brendan and Jaden Stockley are probably the two best players alongside Boss and Lowell, who's a who's another one to look out for at the weekend. Uh, you know, number five in in central midfield. There we go. That was Nappers, uh, who very kindly uh, joined me last night to talk uh, all things Fleetwood ahead of Saturday's game. Uh, up there, yeah, as uh, Jay Kells has pointed out, they got Junior Quitrina Quit as well uh, on, on their books. I didn't realise that, but um, he, I don't think he played Brist the Bristol Rovers game on Tuesday. Um, Shiny Phil says, I felt really bad for Stockley after he'd been quite prolific for us for a while. I felt he was mismanaged and then looked lost uh, when we played him up front on his own. I was going to talk a little bit more about Jaden because, yeah, he's... His last six months or so with us were, were pretty poor, but I thought overall his time with us was good, you know, discounting those last few months. And he scored scored at the Valley um, early on in the season, of course. So I'm, I'm sure he'll be eager to try and get one over us. Um, but more more importantly for them, they, they, they need the wins, which we don't as massively do now. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's infectious listening to him, isn't he? And I think if they've, they've got a fan base like that, then that's that's like, that's your 12th man, isn't it? But I guess, yeah, like that, like he's saying, they have got some decent players there. They have sort of, sort of just sort of floated along for the last few seasons. And I mean, I don't know, you just, you like to see clubs like Fleetwood do well because of where they've come from I think it like you've got a little town um like Fleetwood that you just you just really like seeing again it's like I don't want to sound like I'm patronizing or anything like that but it's like that you always sort of root for the underdog don't you but I think yeah Jaden I feel the same as you Louis like I, I felt like it was really sad the way it ended because he had been good for us and then he just it the formation or whatever was going on at the time just didn't didn't work out for him and so I'm hoping that he he's sort of now getting back to the Jaden that we we saw at his best for Fleetwood to hope hopefully keep him up um because like you say we need we need more clubs like Fleetwood 
doing well in the leagues um to because it gives again it gives those non-league league two clubs more hope um mm. for getting up there yeah although I, I don't know how that sort of ties in with then the owner going to jail for fraud but um, we'll see how that, how that works um jay kells uh, says remember Jaden said he wanted to retire here in a post-match interview at Charlton. it's a sad uh, fall off at times during his last six months. It looked like he had retired. Unfortunately, he was he was struggling um, with us. Um, Sam says Jaden and Alfie would have been a great pairing this season. He had that problem with his back, didn't he, as well, Jaden? Which I think I, I wonder if that held him back a little bit. Uh, Tom, um, from our point of view, obviously we we, we can't go there and uh, and be generous because they're in a in a re- relegation battle. But we, we've obviously got to be wary of a team that that seems to have become quite hard to beat o- over the last few weeks. Um, as uh, Ben was saying, there, Nappers, Tom, like they've. That they've been in every game, so I don't. I don't think anyone who's just looking at the Tamworth right Fleetwood are down there is going to be easy. It'll probably be similar to Cheltenham in that it'll be it'll, it'll be a battle, and we're going to have to work hard to to get the points. Yeah, I don't think at this stage in the season you can take any game for granted because a lot of teams are are fighting for something either at the top or the bottom. We're one of the few that potentially aren't, um, uh, and maybe as I said earlier, maybe we still are. But yeah, I don't remember us ever having an easy time there maybe that Tariq Fosu hat trick aside um yeah I, I always feel like it, it's a difficult place to go our away record obviously has improved recently with those couple of wins we've had at Cheltenham and, and Derby but largely our away record this season has been awful as well um so yeah it's not going to be easy Charlie Adams got them to a level where they're not losing games even if they're drawing a lot and not winning them but yeah I'm sure they're going to be competitive and uh as you've both said, really, we, we can't take it for granted. It's a game that you, you'd hope we can get something from, be it one or, or three points. But, you know, um, yeah, at this stage, everyone's fighting for their lives. They've got that that uh, ex-player bonus as well, haven't they? Because ex-players seem to do well against us. And as you say, Jaden's already done that once this season. So, yeah, it's not going to be an easy game by any stretch. And I haven't felt like I've said that too much. But at this stage in the season, you just can't you just can't tell what's going to happen. But, yeah. Um, if Nathan get, keeps them fired up, which he's been good at doing so far, and and if we play our game, kind of as he was saying on that that interview you had with, with Nappers there, then we probably should have enough in our team to beat him. But that doesn't mm. mean we will. Yeah, Callum saying what Nappers didn't mention that there was uh, Stockley's goal against us uh, was his only one before Boxing Day. <laughs> Um, yeah, Sam says, uh, I think Jones will put a rocket up them after the Carlisle game. Hopefully it'll be a big uh, scoring game. Stewart says it's going to be a typical North versus South away game. Hoof it, clog it, uh, and a very difficult pitch is what he said in, in a certain uh, way of putting it. So, uh, I mean, Nathan's got his own way to describe the pitch. Let's hear Nathan Jones then look ahead to Saturday's trip uh, up to Fleetwood Town. Connor really is, is a, you know, partially because of the injury situation. With that, um, how's the squad generally? And, and uh, Lloyd Jones specifically, of course, because he missed... Uh, yeah, very good, very good. We pulled Lloyd out because we had Heck coming back and we obviously play with three centre-offs and, and stuff anyway and we had a sim way that, that can fill in and, and things. So um, Lloyd, Lloyd just had a little niggle that we've just sorted out so he needed an injection, like a, a, a you know, a... a, a, a an easy injection, so we managed to give it to him and then free him up so he could train fully this week. I think one of the things that fans will be um, noting since since you've arrived is that prior to your arrival, with the injuries that we've had, like with uh, Chucks, with uh, with Lloyd and uh, and others, that would have hurt us a lot in 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 the past. Whereas now it seems to be that uh, the players that are coming in and stepping in and doing doing what you're asking. Okay, oh, everyone's been magnificent since I've come in. The players need all the credit. I know it's a cliche of managers like you know. But they have. I mean, everything I've dem- and I've demanded from them. I haven't asked them to do stuff. I've demanded stuff from them, and they've they've been magnificent on a on a daily basis. They give me everything. They take on board the intelligence levels they've shown, the humility, the desire for work rate, and then the camaraderie. And you know, it's a wonderful place. You know, I, I I love being here, and they've made my life far easier. But if if, I, if I'm honest, there's a good group of players here that want to learn, want to get better. And we're nowhere near where we want to be. Nowhere near. But. We're starting to lay a foundation. Fleetwood up next uh, on Saturday. Another club fighting for survival, and they've proven to be a tough team. It's a tough team to beat under Charlie Adam. Um, only two defeats in the last ten. What sort of contest are you expecting? Uh, exactly that. Really tough. I mean, the pitch is, is a bit rustic up there, like in, in in terms of stuff. So it'll be a difficult game with the, with the conditions, but it'll be a difficult game. They're, they're in decent form, as I said. I've watched them. They, they were down to ten men after 68 minutes against Stevenage, and. Well, I won't say the best chance, but I had a really good chance to have to have won it. Um, 
they're, they'll be well drilled under him. I know Charlie very well. Um, so, yeah, but, and, and they're difficult. And it's always a difficult place to go to the best of times, but, you know, uh, in the recent form they've been in, um, it, it'll be a tough game. But, obviously, I, I'm sure that they'll be thinking exactly the same. And finally for me, the Wigan game just been called off. Do you see that as a chance to recharge batteries or uh, a bit of a pain because of the congestion it's going to bring a bit further down? I see it as a pain because we're in good form and, and everything. I, I, you know, I, I would have preferred to have to have found a way around it in terms of juggling and maybe seeing who we... Because we would have had people missing, but I, I, I would have utilised the squad because I think it's just important to keep a bit of momentum. I think that... You know, having a two-week break now, we don't need it. Not this stage of the career, of the season. Not with there being five weeks of the season left, we don't need a two-week break. You know what I mean? What we need is just continuity. So it's a bit, it's a bit strange, um, but it is what it is. There you go. That's Nathan uh, looking ahead to Fleetwood, and uh, as mentioned right at the end, there obviously next next Saturday's game at home to Wigan is off. It's going to be postponed until a t- a Tuesday in early April. I think about the ninth. Yeah, the ninth. Um, so yeah, so we've got a weekend off uh, next weekend. Uh, Wigan uh, playing silly buggers, uh, says all hell let loose by uh, having players go, uh, uh, of course, on international duty. I mean, they're not really in danger anyway. Let's get the season night over, really. But uh, yeah, Sam says, I just love listening to Jones. He could name uh, a team of 11 debutants and I'd still trust him. Uh, Already my biggest worry is how long we can keep hold of him. All hell let loose. Uh, sent us something on Twitter as well, worrying about that. I mean, it's very early days to be worrying that our manager might leave. Um, he's only been here for about six weeks, but um, yeah, he, he's he's certainly going to be rebuilding his reputation with us for a while. Hopefully, that will be the case. So I'm, I'm not I'm not too worried about that um, just yet. But yeah, as uh, as Sam said, he loves loves listening to him talk. I, I did in, uh, enjoy the the use of the word rustic uh, to describe the pitch. So it just meant was it there's going to be like a barn on it or something. That's uh, very good. Um, team news started off with the Lloyd Jones stuff. So the reason he was missing last week or so he could have an injection and sound according to Nathan it sounds like he'd be available so um, all hell let loose first of all ask will we bring him back in specifically to play against the headmaster is that is that a change you'd see happening Saturday Sue that's a tough one isn't it because we're actually been playing not too badly so it feels like it would be fairly harsh on whoever would be dropped for for Lloyd to come back in but then I I would feel more comfortable I think with Lloyd defending against Jaden so I I think that would be a change I would make um Mm. as as harsh as that is uh, uh, with the lads that have been playing and doing a good job there um he's he is our best defender isn't he so I'll yeah I'd change it yeah I mean there's still there's still that lack of of clean sheets Tom I think Portsmouth is the only one we've, we've kept under under Nathan which is still something that, that needs tidying up and he spoke he spoke a little bit about how the, the the goals we conceded against Carlisle were quite frustrating goals to to concede so maybe he might be minded to try and change things up in in, in that regard I mean elsewhere on the pitch I'm not too sure how how many other changes he'd be desperate desperate to make you know why change a winning side and all that you know Dobson and Coventry seemed to work reasonably well against Carlisle, more so second half. I didn't think we were great first half. But, yeah, I mean, is there anything that you're particularly minded to try and switch up? Is, is it at this stage of the season where, well, you know, if Luar Luar's fit, may, maybe he might be on the bench minimum. But is it at this stage of the season, may, maybe maybe we're a couple wins away of, of actually really experimenting with, with sides when we get to the, the end of the campaign? Yeah, uh, I don't think there's a whole lot. I think Karoy, I felt, looked a little bit tired. On Saturday, I know he's had a week now because we haven't had a Tuesday night game, but I wonder whether you just take him out the firing line. I think he's been absolutely excellent, uh, including last weekend, but he did just look a little bit tired. Maybe the same. I don't think Kanu did look tired, but again, do you want to keep just flogging a youngster? Now we've got Connor Wickham in. I don't know if he can play 90 minutes, but maybe you play him from the start. So there's a couple of options, but really I think it's just preservation of players now and just managing players so that they don't get some sort of injury that keeps them out over the summer because realistically our target assuming we stay up is obviously promotion next year and we've seen time and time again the importance of a good solid pre-season so any players that we're sort of looking at and thinking right they're going to be in that starting 11 next year you want them to be fit and raring to go and so you don't want any of them to get something towards the back end of the season um so maybe that 
but but largely no i don't i don't think he changes too much as you say he's not somebody who's gonna rotate an awful lot if he's got a side playing well i know the goals conceded is still an issue but largely we are playing well and we are getting results so yeah i can't see much else other than that it doesn't sound like chucks is going to be back and obviously miles is and and midfield wise as i say unless you're dropping Karoy, maybe just to rest him i, I don't think there's a lot there either mm, yeah i mean you, you mentioned dan now uh, well, I, I did save this from the other day i just just in case we we got a chance to use it and i, I think we should hear what well, um, I, I asked um, Alfie May, obviously, who's been an experienced goal getter uh, at this level for a long time, just what he's made of, uh, of Dan Carnu so far this season. And as well, I mean, obviously, he's, he's a much much younger player, still learning his trade very much, but he's had a remarkable sort of coming of age season. Yeah, he's probably first name on the team sheet, isn't he, at the minute? He's, uh, he's listen, you can see it from, as, as, a, as a, another striker, you can see that he just knows where the net is. He's he's gone on loan to to Southend probably that he needed. Um, I know it was only short, but he scored goals there and he's come back and he's he's grabbed a shirt with both hands and and he's playing week in week out and he's scoring goals and he's he's unbelievable. He's him and Karoy, Charlton have got great players on their hands with them too. They uh, like I say, they're probably going to go to the top level because they just they work hard every day. Uh, they're just everything about them. They're they're, they're superb, and they're, they're, they're they deserve everything that they that's going to come their way. There we go. I mean, that's real, real high praise there from from Alfie for Dan. Quite humble as well, obviously, for for Alfie to say that Dan is the first name on the team sheet. But we've we've seen that over the last few weeks when there has been sort of flitting of the strikers that Dan has been the one that stays in, and whether it's Ladapo or May coming in to to switch sort of alongside him. So it, it is good to hear, though. Like, I mean, it, it'd be very interesting to see how far his career goes because this this season for Dan has just been spectacular. See, yeah, I mean, I think even. Prior to this season, I, I know quite a lot of the fans that watch watch the the, the development squad, like the twenty threes and the eighteens, have been raving about Dan for years. Um, so it was no real big shock. I guess the shock is is how good he is, as quick as it has been. So yeah, having that loan spell out, I think we've talked about younger players needing those loans out sometimes um, at a lower a lower club that that kind of gives them that bit of confidence and freedom to then come back full of confidence and be able to just hit the ground running. So um it's it's yeah, I love listening to Alfie talk about it because again he's like he's an experienced player. Um and it, when you've got someone that's sort of in his thirties showing that much respect to someone who's who's still a teenager, um it's it's lovely to hear, and it, I guess it says a lot about the the team dynamic and how well everyone sort of is gelled together. Because there's no sort of well, I guess egos or anything like that. It's Nathan wouldn't stand for that, but it's yeah, mm-hmm. it's just lovely to see one of our own doing so well. Yeah, Dan says uh, well, he says Carnan will be a target for the likes of Brentford and Bright, uh, Brighton uh, in the summer. Uh, he also says that seeing Tedic on the list of goal scorers has made me think about banning all loans from Man City. We did get two. It's two two more than the other one we've had from Man City <laughs> so far. Uh, poor poor old Lewis Fury. <laughs> He's just not getting the chance at all uh, at the moment. As Sam points out, massive uh, shout out to our academy work. Uh, seeing the likes of Gomez and Konza being picked for for England today. Yeah, it's always always a very proud moment. Right, we've run out of time. Uh, on this week's uh, big match preview. Massive thanks to everyone who's joined us uh, live uh, on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Um, we're, we're ticking up quite nicely as there. Subscribe where you get your podcasts as well so you can uh, listen to the show twice. That'd be a good thing to do, wouldn't it? Listen to it twice. Listen to it as many times uh, as you want. A massive thanks to Nappers, who joined us as our guest uh, from Fleetwood uh, earlier on. It was great to hear from him. Hopefully we'll uh, hear from him again next season if Fleetwood can uh, stay up. Massive thanks, Sue and Tom, as per always. Great to speak to you. Cheers, both. Thank you, both. There we go. I'm Louis Mendes. This has been Charlton Live, uh, the big match preview sponsored by the British Institute of Kitchen, Bedroom and Bathroom Installation. We shall see you again on Sunday uh, when we'll look back at the game up at Fleetwood. We'll see you later. (laughs) 